Hello, in this video we're going to learn how to make some microbial growth curves in Excel based on some cell density data that we recorded at zero hours up to 48 hours. We had two samples that we were testing, a control compared to a treatment, and there were two replicates for each of these. The first thing we want to do is we want to calculate our average and our standard deviation. The average is going to be used to actually plot our curves and the standard deviation we're going to use to make error bars. So for the average we just type equals average into Excel and then we highlight the numbers that we want to average, in this case the two numbers from our control treatment at zero hours. Now what we can do is we can grab that cell and then drag it across to fill in all of those columns. They will automatically take the average of the two values we want at that time point. We can copy and paste this down and because I have a row space in here it will automatically move down to be the average of our treatment. We can also do the standard deviation, which is equals STVV, and then highlight those two samples again, and again fill across. We can copy that and paste down. What you may find is your numbers are really huge. What all you have to do to deal with that is to change the number of decimal points that you see in your numbers up here. So now that we have our averages, we can plot our charts. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight our hours. That's going to be our x-axis, and we're going to highlight our averages for our cell growth, and that is going to be our y-axis. So what we're going to do is go up to Insert. You can also go to the Insert tab. Insert a scatter plot, and we want to scatter plot with lines. I prefer straight lines because Excel makes some assumptions when they smooth, so you can pick the straight lines with your markers. Okay, so we've got our plots, but we have a few issues with it. First, let's get rid of that title. Generally, you don't want a title in your chart unless you're giving a presentation. It can be useful there. But if you're writing a report, you definitely do not want a title on your figure. Okay, first thing you notice is that we have no labels on these lines, so let's add them now. So our first line is our control sample. We can either write in control by putting control in apostrophes, or we can just click on control on our spreadsheet. So let's do that. And then we can do the same thing for our treatment. All right, we also do not currently have any access labels, so let's add those as well. So we're gonna click on our chart, go to chart design, add chart element, add our primary horizontal, or our x-axis, and add our primary vertical, or our y-axis. And then we give them labels. In this case, our x-axis represents time in hours, always use, include your units, and our y-axis represents the cell growth, in optical density at 600 nanometers, OD 600. All right, so a couple things we wanna to do to these axes. I don't really like how they're organizing our numbers. So here I wanna get rid of those decimal points. They're not really needed because all of these are whole numbers. So we can remove those by setting that to zero. And then we can go and we can reduce the scale of our X axis by going up to our bounds and changing our maximum to 50. We don't need it at 60 because we only go up to 48 hours. There, that looks pretty good. What happens though if you have a lot of overlap in your data and you can't really see the charts very well? Well, sometimes it's okay, you can still plot them that way, but you also might want to make two subfigures. In that case, you can copy that figure with Control C, click off, hit Control V, and then you can delete the lines that you don't want in that figure. So we'll do our control first. So we'll delete the treatment line, all right, and then we'll delete our control line. All right, the problem is now that our axes don't line up, so this is now deceptive, right? So it looks like we get as much cell growth for our treatment as our control, but that's because it changed our axis. So let's double click on that and change our maximum to match our control, seven. Beautiful. All right, so the last thing we wanna do is we want to add some error bars to our figures. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our data. We're gonna go to add chart element error bars. Now you might be tempted to do standard error percentage or standard deviation, but that's not going to work properly. What we need to do actually, because we're plotting our average, is to go to our more error bars options. And we're going to make a custom error bar. So we only want, it's now given us horizontal error bars, which is kind of annoying. Maybe if we tab, there we go. So you can tab over to delete. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our error bars and we want to actually put in numbers. But what we want to do is go down to a custom value and specify our values. 
So now what we're going to do is that for our control, we're going to specify a plus or minus of our standard deviation that we already calculated. And we're going to do that for both the plus and minus error bar. We're going to hit OK. All right, that's excellent. So now we can also go in and do the same thing for our other data. All right, and there we have it. We have very little error in our data, as you can see, and our, our growth curves are plotted and they look gorgeous. So hopefully you've learned a little bit and you're able to go out and make some fantastic plots.